Welcome to Mark Arnold's Finance. Tattooed Chef just reported earnings. I went over this, so this will kind of be my initial reaction. We're gonna go over the numbers, the forecasts, my opinion, and a lot more in a quick video. So let's get started. If you're new to my channel, I'm somebody that's transparent. I'm gonna be showing my portfolio performance here in just a second, and that's something I do with every single video. If you appreciate that type of transparency, uh, give my channel a shot, subscribe. I have diverse content as well, and I'm growing my channel and my knowledge and the goal is to become wealthy long term and I feel we can all do that together and help each other. So be sure to subscribe and I appreciate it very much. So let's look at my portfolio performance quickly. We will see here that I'm going up in the green uh, little by little each time I show you guys this video. I was in the red for a while this year and then it was kind of flirting with the one to 2% in the green and then this last couple of weeks it shot up to over 5% which I'm now at 5.7% in the green and that's $2,287 of profit so far unrealized gains, shall we say. Uh, Amazon is the one that I think really helped propel me. This is a company I put a decent amount of money in. Uh, but we're gonna focus on Tattooed Chef. And as you can see here, it is down 51.13%. This company has not been kind to me. I bought in at the wrong time. I kind of you know, followed the hype. It's kind of a cult stock. And I do believe in its future, but I should have taken a step back and did a little bit more analysis myself. Uh, regardless, this is where I'm at with Tattoo Chef. It is a small position, I believe, just shy of 2% of my portfolio. Uh, so let's get started. Quickly, their earnings per share, they were expecting a negative 15 cents per share. They came in at negative 32 cents, so a big miss there. Uh, their expected sales were to be 64.08 million, and their actual sales came in at 50.72 million, so another miss there. Uh, and I think that's why if we look here at their stock chart that it's after hours, it is down 7.85%. So if that's any indication of what investors are thinking or you know, how they're reacting to the stock, they didn't like what they saw. So we're gonna start with a few just random things that I pulled from their earnings report. Then we're gonna go into my metrics chart, which I geared towards these earnings. And then I'll talk about their full outlook, the 2022 outlook that they gave and then my opinion on this company, what I plan on doing with it. So let's first look at this lending line that they talked about. So they expanded the UMB asset-based lending line from 25 million to 40 million. Basically, this is them taking a loan and they increased it to a $40 million loan. They haven't used any of it so far. So what they're waiting for, I don't know, but it's, it's, it'll be interesting to see what they do and do with this loan and they're expanding massively in a lot of ways, so it could be them just uh, waiting to use this money for something specific. So this will be interesting to follow and see what they do with it. Uh, if we look at their operational highlights, we will see here that they added more than 35,000 new points of distribution. They integrated a new 45,000 square foot Tattoo Chef operated cold storage facility. That is fantastic. That's gonna allow them a lot more control on their expenses and their storage fees. They also completed the first run of Tattoo Chef refrigerated plant-based oat butter bars at the Belmont facility. So this is something they're getting ready to roll out. Uh, I don't really, I haven't ever bought the refrigerated bars. I do see them. So I'll be curious to see how these do for them. I don't see them as very popular, but that could just be me in my small little circle here. Uh, now they increased capacity and streamlined production process at New Mexico Food Distribution Distributors facility. So Again, they're growing, they're expanding, and they completed construction of a new in-house food safety laboratory in Paramount, in Paramount facility. Uh, this is just them probably gearing up to keep pumping out their products and expanding their SKUs, and this is fantastic. So with this operational highlights, I like what I see. They're growing, they're expanding, and they're becoming smart with what they do and what they own as far as like that cold storage facility, that's fantastic. Um, if we look at, you know, of course with the new products, we saw there those uh, bars, the refrigerated oat butter bars, but they're also going to release by the end of 2023 dairy and grain free chips, which I'm excited about. I love chips. Uh, sometimes I can't help myself. If I open a bag, I'll finish the bag. So this is something that's exciting. Plus, this will be something that is not in the refrigerated section 
which if you have a product in a refrigerated section, it's more costly because the store is gonna charge you more because that's an expense for the store. So your profits on that are smaller, the profit margins compared to non-refrigerated items. So this will be good for them. Now I decided to look at their current products and I was uh, surprised to see two new ones that I haven't really, that I didn't really know about. Um, that just shows how fast this company is growing. So I know about the bowls, the vegetables, the pizzas, the burritos. I didn't know they had burgers, which is great. And I didn't really know they had these mills. So they have ganache and different pasta mills. Uh, so this is just fantastic showing they are growing and expanding and I can't wait till those chips come out. So if we dive into the metrics, this is really what they released on these earnings and we're gonna be comparing them to the same quarter last year. So revenue came in at 58.1 million. Uh, last year, the same quarter came in at 50.3 million. So the revenue increased 15.51%. I definitely, in a company this new, in this growth phase, I'd like to see it above 20%. So it was so-so for me, but still a positive because it was growth and in decent growth. So I give it a green. Anything highlighted in green is positive for me. Now their branded product revenue came in at 33.9 million. The same quarter last year is 33.1 million. So only a 2.42% increase. I do not like to see that. Their branded product is what really needs to grow. This should have been above 10% in my opinion. So a little bit of a letdown. Their net loss came in at 26.4 million versus the loss of the quarter of last year, same quarter of 53.2 million. So that is a 50% decrease in their, in their losses, which is great. So that's a highlight. Their adjusted EBITDA, again, EBITDA is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization, came in at a loss of 20.5 million. Now the loss last year in the same quarter was 5.9 million. So that's a 240% increase in the EBITDA loss. So not a good thing, don't like to see that. Uh, these next three items, I couldn't get comparisons from the same quarter last year. They, they must have not been reporting it, or at least putting the information out there yet. But of course we saw their new points of distribution are 35,000. They have 30 new products, uh, which to my surprise, I saw some new ones, so that's good. You know, it really is being effective at what they're doing, they're growing. The retailer locations are now sit at 17,200. That is awesome. You know, recently in the last year and a half, they got into big grocery chains like Kroger, um, Albertsons, just so on and so forth. They're in Sprouts. Um, of course, they have non-branded products in Trader Joe's. I see them in Walmarts, uh, in Costco. So they are in all the stores. So that's great to see. Now their cost of goods sold went up, they're at 57.4 million. Last year, same quarter, it was 42 million. So that's a 36.67% increase. And we'll see that trend with the, you know, the general expenses and costs because of inflation. Uh, their gross profit, unfortunately, went down to 0.7 million. Last year in the same quarter, it was 8.3 million. So that's a huge 91.57% reduction. Again, that's attributable to mainly the increase with the cost, you know, the inflation that's going on. Their operating expenses came in at 24.3 million. Uh, last year, same quarter was 16.4 million. So that's a 48.17% increase. Um, so not only are they expanding, so expenses you know, will go up, but it's also inflation. So you have those two things going against them, but the expansion part is uh, positive as well. So you gotta look at it at, uh, kind of in that light. Their cash is at a 27.7 million uh, this quarter. The same quarter last year was at 142 or 140.2 million, so that's an 80% decrease. Uh, you know, a company that's in this growth stage, they're gonna be, you know, throwing money around left and right, so not a red flag for me, and they still have decent cash compared to their long-term debt, which is only 1.4 million, and the same quarter last year was seven million, so that's an 80% decrease. So uh, I love this part of it. The debt is a highlight for me that it's so low compared to their cash, so that's great. Now their earnings per share we saw was negative 32 cents. Now the same quarter last year was negative 64 cents. So that's a 50% improvement. So that's a good thing. Even though they, met, they missed expectations compared to last year, it looks positive. So uh, I didn't highlight it just because they did miss, but it is an improvement over last year's same quarter. Now we went through all the information quickly. So how I rate their future, one being the worst, 10 the best, I rate them a five, I'm 50-50. They still have a bright future I'm gonna talk about in a minute, but I still think they have some decent risks and it puts it right in the middle for me. 
So if we look at their full year outlook, the one thing that is good is their revenue remains unchanged. It is between 280 to 285 million that they plan on making this year in 2022. A lot of companies are revising their revenue lower. This company is not changing it. They're keeping it the same. That is very a very good thing as a, an investor in Tattooed Chef. So I like to see that. Now, unfortunately, their gross margin is, uh, their guidance went down and it's now going to be 8 to 10% down from the prior guidance of 10 to uh, 12%. And that's due to continued costs, cost inflationary pressures um, and the timeline of implementing, you know, different automation initiatives at their facilities. Uh, so that's just something that'll have to take a hit for now, but it will go back up at some point. Now, marketing expenses will come in at between 27 to 32 million and capital expenditures will come in at about 20 million. Uh, so I, I, overall, their outlook is great, except for the gross margins. The fact that nothing else was, was really changed is fantastic. Uh, so that means things are really going as planned, which is what we want to see. So what's my opinion on this company at this point? I'm still bullish on this company, and I'm going to tell you why. I believe this company will just grow its repeat customers. They have good products. I love their burrito bowls and the other products I've tried, and I'm a repeat buyer of their food. In fact, Costco, I would stock up massively on their burrito bowls because they were that good. When they stopped uh, carrying them because that's just how Costco works, hopefully they'll be back at some point, I was buying and uh, stocking up on, their, on these burrito bowls. They were that good. So I think repeat customers will just continue to grow, which will increase their revenue in a more consistent, dependable way. This company is vertically integrated, which means they can control a lot of their costs and expenses. Uh, and this is just great. We saw that they have the cold food storage facility. They have these other like Mexico food distributors. Uh, they have a laboratory now. So that's impressive. This company is gearing up for massive growth in the future. And so that's what I like to see. They're taking control of their own company by buying these things that other companies pay fees for, right? We'll pay someone else to store our food. No, they're doing it themselves. Um, so this is just amazing. I love that it's a vertically integrated company. Automation, this is what they are working on and this is gonna provide uh, a great level of help for their gross profits, their gross margins, their expenses, so on and so forth and allow them to probably uh, you know, put out more product quicker and when they expand their product line, it's just going to be a great thing overall. So automation and their product expansion has been incredible. This company, it doesn't sleep. This company goes, goes, goes. And so uh, seeing what they have so far, what they're planning on doing, I'm excited to see what they come out next year, the year after, the year after that. I just think this company will have so many products and that's going to be great. Um, now, the only negative is that, you know, it is a company in its infancy. It's still new. And there's a lot of risk with that. And things can go south quickly with a company that is this small. Uh, that there's nothing that I'm saying is going to happen. I'm just saying if things go wrong, they can go wrong in a big way. So that's why I gave it a five because they have so many great things going for them but they are a small company and the risks are just higher when it comes with a company like this that is competing out there uh, with big names like Beyond Meat uh, and things like that. So uh, I like what I see still. The numbers, you gotta look outside that quarter, right? It's easy to just look at those numbers and just stare at them and just you know let it take over you, but look outside the big picture. This company's growing, it's expanding, and it's taking control of its own business in a big way that a lot of companies don't do. So I'm still bullish. I bought in at the wrong time, but long term, I don't think it'll matter. I'm gonna still average down when I can. I'm just gonna keep it a small position in my portfolio because of that higher risk. And hopefully in, we'll give it two years, I'll be in the green. And I'm excited to see what this company does and try those new chips. So with that said, let me know what you think of Tattooed Chef, their earnings, uh, my holding in my portfolio. Um, and what you plan on doing with the stock if you own it. Was this a good thing for you? Do you look outside the quarter and like the things that I brought up, why I'm bullish? Uh, I'd love to hear all your opinions. So let me know 
And with that said, I hope you guys have a great day and we'll see you next time on Mark Arnold's Finance.